Naylor, and today we're talking about a crash that happened this weekend. One person was killed and three others were injured in a two car crash involving a Berkeley electric truck in Ravenel. And David, you're here to give us some insight into, you know, kind of who's at fault when tragedies like this happen. Yeah, it's such a tragedy. Um, you know, you got several people hurt, obviously one death, and it's something that could have definitely been avoided. And as it appears right now, while the investigation is still ongoing, it appears that the uh, individual in the truck, the uh, electric co-op truck, was actually inattentive while driving and mm -hmm. ran into the back of a vehicle that had stopped um, at a, basically a turnout where another vehicle was coming out. And then, of course, that truck, its size and speed going into uh, the car in front of it caused uh, the, the damage and, of course, the ultimately the untimely death and injuries to yeah. the people involved. Um, for the grieving family members, obviously, it's a long process to go through. Once they do proceed and, you know, the investigation completes itself, and they go maybe to an attorney. Is this something that could go to a court or this would be settled? How's it all going to work? Well, you know, first thing they're going to have is, uh, you know, somebody's going to come out there, whatever police departments mm -hmm. within the agency in that area is going to come out and do an investigation mm -hmm. to determine who's at fault. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes in these situations you find where there's multiple parties at fault. Mm -hmm. Other times it's one party, and sometimes they can't determine it. Mm -hmm. uh, more than likely than not in this scenario, I would assume that it's going to end up being the driver of the co-op sure. truck at fault. And then at that point, you have to look at, you know, what's come from it. Beyond of course the injuries uh, to mm -hmm. the people that are actually still living you have the death of a person um, in this situation I believe it was a minor so mm -hmm. whoever's over their estate is going to be in charge of that most likely the parents um, and then you know you have two different ways to go obviously insurance companies just like in any accident case mm -hmm. are going to be involved from the very beginning um, you know it's very important to understand that with these insurance companies just like any other case with all due respect to the injured and the dead they're going to try to quickly resolve it sure. um, but I can't think of a situation that'd be more important to get some legal counsel, mm -hmm. uh, particularly to establish who's the executor of the deceased estate mm -hmm. uh, so that person can make decisions uh, for the deceased. Mm -hmm. And then the people that are injured, of course, as well, if they're related and there's got to be obviously a connection with the deceased, mm -hmm. uh, they too would need counsel uh, simply because, you know, there's so many things that are going to be going on from mm -hmm. an emotional standpoint. You don't want to mm -hmm. make any decisions or sign on anything where you don't sure. have a clear head. Well, that's what I wanted to ask as a parent. You know, I can't fathom going through this, and this is probably the furthest thing from their minds right now. They're dealing with so much right. else. Is there a timeline on everything though that you know can you just call an attorney and say hey we'll touch base later you handle this for now like how does it all work? You know uh, what I suggest to a lot of people whether it be clients of my own or people that are you know in other states mm -hmm. friends and family is once you have that attorney just let mm -hmm. the attorney take over on anything mm -hmm. to do with the insurance company and the accident even if you have to do a reconstruction of the accident mm -hmm. that sort of thing and go back to your family and care about the people that are hurt the most mm -hmm. you know but if you don't separate that barrier the insurance company has no reason to stop coming to you coming mm -hmm. to your family trying to resolve the situation. And that's like the last thing you want. Right? Exactly you don't want to resolve it quickly mm -hmm. and you don't want to make any decisions without getting enough information on what your you know actual options are so if you get that attorney ahead of time it's not a scenario where people think oh there's going to be attorneys having me sign all these papers constantly you know whether it be at my home or in a hospital room it's really not like that once mm -hmm. it's established and the insurance companies are contacted by the attorney mm -hmm. at that point they know they have to directly go through the legal counsel they can't go back to the grieving family you know, this is such a tragedy, obviously, with the loss of life, but people that just have fender benders or something minor and the insurance company is still trying to settle, is that a case where you want an attorney or is it not worth your time? You know, uh, when you're talking about any time you have personal injury, you definitely want to at least consult an attorney. Gotcha. Now, an attorney may say, hey, it's easier for you to handle this on your own. Mm -hmm. uh, however, at least it's something you want to start mm -hmm. with looking at. Uh, sometimes you see situations where people will get treatment for a while, then stop, mm -hmm. then go back for more treatment, and then say, hey, maybe now I need an attorney because gotcha. I've been continuing to go. That gap in the treatment could be an issue and those are the type of things that attorney can help give advice on. All right, thank you so much. Thanks for Trial having me. Tuesday with attorney David Ayler and stick with us. We've got much more to come right here on Low Country Live.